was the properties of ROC, right? The topic that we are discussing was the properties of ROC. Hmm. So, what are the things with ROC, by the way? So, first thing first, ROC is a connected region, right? So, you can see in all the previous problems that you saw, ROC was just shaded, right? It was not a, you know, a point or something, right? So, ROC in all the previous problems was a shaded region over an entire, see, you can see ROC is a shaded region. It is not a single point or something. It's not a, a point, right? You can see. ROC is a shaded uh, region everywhere so, and it is connected region right in this entire area here you can see so everywhere it is connected from some point A to some point B from some point uh, radius A to some radius B everything in that particular radius will be uh, stable right so that was the, the thing with ROC so the first property of ROC I think we all are Convinced. ROC is a connected region. The second one, ROC does not contain any poles. So poles actually, ROC means the region of convergence. That means in the ROC, your uh, x, of, x, x of z, right, the z transform has to give you a finite value, right? That's what ROC is. Whereas the def very definition of pole itself is that poles are those values which make x of z go to infinity. So poles actually will form the boundaries of the ROC and they never contain the ROC itself, right? You can see there are so many examples you will find, you can see here. So here is the ROC, there on the boundary there is a pole in the previous problem, uh, which one of you, here you can see. Here is the ROC inside and pole is there on the boundary, right? Pole is there on the boundary of the ROC. Here also you can see this is the ROC. And you can see there is a pole in that. Inside this particular circle there is a pole here. But then this is not in the ROC. Right? So this property I think is quite that we mentioned. ROC does not contain any poles. Okay. Hmm? Next one is ROC of a finite duration signal is entire that plane. Right? First three problems what we saw. First three problems what we saw. Right? So you can see here. Uh, which one? Uh, see. Uh, where, 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 um, okay. This one uh, here you can see. Delta N. This is just an impulse. ROC is entire region. Here also. Uh, impulse X plus K. ROC entire region. And you can see this first three problems that we saw. One, two, three. Finite duration signal. ROC was entire region. Except for Z may be zero or infinity. Except maybe for zero or infinity. Okay. Hmm? So that was quite uh, convincing. Then what are the next property? What is the next property? The next property is uh, ROC of a right-sided signal is outside a circle. You can see U of N. It's a right-sided signal, right? U of N. So okay, ROC is outside some circle of certain radius. Whereas if at all we see um, any other negative signal, you can see this. Uh, this thing here you can see here ROC is both of them left sided right so ROC is inside a circle okay hmm? so ROC of a right side signal is outside a circle left side is a signal is inside the circle and for a both sided signal it's a concentric ring have you seen a both sided signal uh, you can see here this one is inside this one is so ROC turned out to be concentric if at all ROC, if at all ROC, then it will be a concentric ring. Hmm? Then it will be okay. Hmm? Then it will be a concentric ring. Hmm? So that was that. Then the last property that we discussed. That's where we had to stop, right? Okay. Uh -huh. ROC for stable system includes a unit circle. What is a stable system actually? You can see alpha to the power n into uh, u of n. Mm -hmm. So those are uh, stable systems. So for example, um, where it is? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. here alpha to the power n into u of n is a stable system. Okay. Mm -hmm. Alpha to the depends on right. If alpha is greater than one alpha to the power. Okay. Let me draw here a unit circle. Okay. So let me know what is meant by unit circle. 
a circle of radius one is a unit circle okay hmm? now here you see this particular example if alpha was a two then what would have this would have been alpha is two then this would have been a growing exponential right if alpha was two this would have been a growing exponential then my roc would be of radius two to the power n into of n right magnitude z greater than two it wouldn't have contained the unit circle whereas if alpha is equal to 0.5 then it will be a smaller circle right than uh, unit circle then it will contain the roc will contain the unit circle similarly 2 to the power n suppose i say 2 to the power n into u of minus n hmm? suppose i say 2 to the power n into u of minus n so can somebody tell me whether this is stable or unstable 2 to the power n into u of minus n how does that look like this particular signal will look like uh, 2 to the power 0 2 to the power minus 1 2 to the power on the left side this exists on the left side and it is definitely exists on the left side and it is definitely a stable one right and what will be the roc of 2 to the power n into of minus n we have discussed this right so roc of this thing will be inside the circle of radius 2 okay hmm? inside the circle of radius 2, two to the power n into of n it is a transform contains an roc inside the circle of radius 2 so this circle of radius 2 our uh, unit circle will have radius one so the last property is also quite convincing hmm? the roc of a uh, uh, roc of a stable system includes the unit circle okay hmm? so all these problems here what we saw we are trying to arrive at the properties of roc in all these problems we are trying to arrive at the property of uh, roc okay hmm? so now uh, what next what shall we do next hmm. Yeah, so now we will see few more problems. So okay, we will see few more problems, and after that we will go to the properties of Z transform. Okay, uh, there are some interesting problems here. Hmm. So uh, which one? Which one? Anything uh, interesting ones uh, here? Ah, here there are some problems. Okay, so uh, now what about this one? By the way, uh, what about this problem here? X of n equal to delta n minus k so what is this particular signal delta n minus k means this exists at k right it's single value at k so we do not have to do a summation since it contains only single term so x of k is at to the power minus k hmm? so since it is a finite duration signal roc is going to be entire z plane only right roc is going to be entire z plane okay arrows is going to be entire z plane and unless if you substitute z equal to zero then it is going to be go to infinity for all other values this is infinity so there is uh arrows is entire z plane except z equal to zero that is where the pole is arrows cannot contain poles right so arrows is entire z plane except z is equal to zero okay and how many poles are there here by the way z to the power minus k if there is z there is only one pole if there is z square there are two poles if there is z to the power four there are four poles so here there are k number of poles okay hmm? there are k number of poles okay so that was one problem now you can see now this problem here the impulse was on the right side right now here is similar problem and here you can see the impulse is now on the left side the impulse is now on the left side at k so that is why x of z turned out to be z to the power plus k hmm? so the expression turned out to be z to the power uh, plus k so when the expression turned out to be z to the power plus k uh, what's going to happen by the way now now this can be made zero uh, x of z can be made infinity only if at all i substitute z equal to infinity right see here it's a finite duration sequence right there is only one impulse right there is only one impulse that is why uh, roc is going to be entire z plane roc is going to be entire z plane and uh, any poles by the way 
do you see any poles here oh, poles are those values of x of z which make x of z goes to infinity so here you can see unless you substitute z equal to infinity this can never be infinite so the pole there is a pole there is pole may be at there is pole may be at uh, infinite there are no poles actually hmm? there are no poles unless you substitute z equal to infinity hmm? so roc is entire z plane except z equal to infinity here you can see these are zeros okay hmm? if i don't substitute z equal to zero this will go to zero so there are zeros how many zeros if i had z to the power two in the numerator i would have at two zeros if i had z to the power three i would have had three zeros so there are k number of zeros here in the origin okay we don't call it zero at zero right it looks odd that's why you say that there is a zero at origin okay hmm? any other interesting problem uh, here huh, u of n u of n so this is a template right alpha to the power into u of n is z divided by z minus alpha here alpha is anyway one one minus alpha z to the power minus one magnitude z greater than alpha this is a template okay hmm? uh, half to the power n into u of minus n hmm? so any doubts in this one by the way so this also left sided signal so this also is a left sided signal right so roc had to be inside a circle it is known so you just do minus infinity to zero hmm? minus infinity to zero so that is why this turned out to be zero to infinity uh, for z so this is the place where we see the uh, determine the roc anyway this is the z transform how do we get the poles by the way one minus four z we simply equate one minus four z to zero hmm? so see the requirement for poles and zero is both your x of z has to be there in positive powers of z in both numerator and denominator okay, if at all substitute is equal to zero i will get uh, the pole where do i get the pole so uh, z equal to uh, pole at z equal to one by four right we simply equal to zero you will get a pole at uh, one by four yeah see this is the pole okay hmm? so that is how we uh, get to do this okay hmm? that is how we get to do this okay hmm? then okay mm, yeah any other numericals any other numericals any doubts by the way if at all you get any doubts you do not hesitate okay hmm? so you can ask the questions if at all you get any doubts in between okay uh, what next uh, yeah uh, this also yeah trivial trivial mm. yeah. Okay, anything tricky here in this no mm, no no yeah. ah, now here is an interest group here is an interesting question hmm? this is uh, x of uh, n is equal to alpha to the power magnitude n now i want you to just uh, listen in carefully x of n equal to alpha to the power n how does it uh, look like see author here himself given a hint assuming magnitude alpha less than one and magnitude alpha greater than one so this alpha to the power magnitude n thing you can see here is if alpha is uh, less than one then what's going to happen for positive side it's a decaying exponential okay for positive side it's a decaying exponential and for negative side also it's a decaying exponential fine it's a tent okay hmm? for negative side also it's a decaying exponential it turned out to be a tent here hmm? it turns out to be a tent hmm? so 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 what's going to happen now negative side also it's a it's a thing so for alpha greater than one what's going to happen for alpha greater than one what's going to happen for positive side for positive side uh it is uh for positive side also it's a growing exponential and for negative side also it's a growing exponential okay hmm? okay so now if at all i have to solve this so what's going to happen so this is going to take a form something like this okay hmm, uh, here the next okay so you can see you can see here first it goes from zero to infinity so one more thing i think this problem here is similar to your e to the power minus magnitude t so the expression on the right side is alpha to the power 
n okay on the left side it is alpha to the power minus n hmm? on left side the expression is alpha to the power minus n so you can see this is alpha into z to the power minus n to hold to the power n i wrote on the right side on the left side you can see alpha to the power minus 1 because of this minus n here okay that will be the difference and since i have taken 0 to infinity consider this 0 has been considered in this part only here i will go from minus infinity to minus 1 only okay i will go from minus infinity to minus 1 okay hmm? grow from minus infinity to minus 1 okay hmm? see here you know see here you can put it to uh, minus 1 okay so now this is standard template this is a standard template where i will simply substitute z divided by z minus alpha whose roc is going to be uh, magnitude uh, z great this is the right side signal okay so here the roc is already unknown uh, so what is it by the way it is outside alpha right it is outside alpha mm, this is outside alpha here now since the summation is from minus infinity to minus one let me take it as uh, zero to infinity and i will just exclude this minus one here okay and of course i have changed the limit so you can see the minus infinity to minus one has been changed to one to infinity okay by putting k is equal to minus n then afterwards then afterwards k equal to zero to infinity has been substituted with the a minus one okay let me just stop here once again i have observed that only um how many only nine students are there okay so uh yeah what about remaining um, all girls except namrita have decided to bunk i guess and uh boys uh, who uh, uh uh hey two to the four boys right muhammad and uh what uh, who are right uh, you just inform them okay hmm? to attend uh classes okay from at least two more onwards okay because that transform is you know sort of uh, uh interesting not interesting this is easy okay one cannot uh, miss that transform okay so inform them they'll be losing the attendance also hmm? okay yeah we will continue okay so you know what happened here so this is actually minus infinity to minus one converted into zero to infinity okay so it should it is actually one to infinity okay since this is actually one to infinity okay so when i do one to infinity since i start from one the value at zero if at all i include why do i include the value at zero because i have a ready formula one divided by one minus alpha i have the formula that is where what i will do is i will take this particular value here and then i will substitute the remaining ones right so that is why that is why what we will do is we will uh, stick to uh, yeah this particular thing okay so that is why now one divided by one minus alpha z minus and it became and finally after so many manipulation it turned out to be z divided by z minus alpha minus z divided by z minus one by okay now what about the roc here so you can see this is the point okay roc is determined one i will determine here for zero to infinity here the roc will determine for at this particular point okay from here you can see this particular term should be less than one okay so that means this is in a straightforward so this turns out to be roc greater than a circle of radius alpha right hmm? so for first case it turns out to be roc a circle greater than radius alpha okay hmm? yes alpha and for the second case oh god it's so difficult drawing the circle here anyway i'll show you hmm? okay in the second case what is the requirement this particular term should be less than alpha hmm? this particular term should be less than alpha that means so what i'm going to get you can see huh so alpha z to the power minus one this should be less than alpha yes and this term two should be less than alpha that gives that gives uh two types of cases here that gives me two types of cases here you can see now suppose i take suppose i take uh, alpha is equal to 0 0.5 okay so alpha is equal to 0 0.5 then my z transform is between alpha and one by alpha right intersection of alpha and 
1 by alpha so that means greater than so for first sequence it is greater than 0 0.5 for second sequence it is less than 1 by 0.5 1 by 0 0.2 so i will get the roc here a concentric ring for the second case suppose my alpha is equal to 2 hmm? second case say for alpha is equal to 2 what's going to happen is greater than 2 okay hmm? you can see for first case this is alpha greater than magnitude z magnitude z uh, greater than alpha first one is stable for magnitude greater than alpha is here outside the circle and the second sequence is stable this one is stable for magnitude z less than less than 1 by alpha now 1 by 2 is 0.5 here so that's why what happens is both the z transform both the rocs do not overlap so this roc is a empty set right this roc you can see is a empty set so what sort of signal was this by the way x of n alpha to the power n this is a uh, both sided signal see this signal exists on the right side also and the left side also hmm. so now here this goes to show only for magnitude alpha less than 1.5 for example there exists the roc for magnitude alpha greater than 1 there does not exist the roc at all right this is a very very interesting problem with certain inference so what is going to it says it indicates the mysterious way in which the z transform works so how a z transform works is z transform puts in this particular person z right Z transform you can see there was this alpha right if it was less than one it would have been stable greater than one it would have been unstable so along with this alpha he put in this particular guy z okay hmm? along with alpha there came a guy z maybe we'll consider it as some sort of a feedback or a constant or a gain something like that it is indicated so that if at all i had simple alpha if at all i had simple alpha to the power n into of n right side signal something like this okay if at all my alpha was greater than one hmm? if my alpha was greater than one it will put a z along with it it will put a z along with it okay so that both of them get multiplied and i will get a stable system if at all my z is less than one then it will be able to control right so uh, you are putting some z along with the alpha right so what happened here what happened here now this thing here for alpha greater than one, the signal was growing on both the sides so that is why if you put in a single z you can see roc contains a single z if at all you put a z if at all you put a, a z along with this right z can take only one direction you cannot have a z with a magnitude so if at all a z tries to bring this thing down on the right side the left side will go out of control if it tries to bring down the left side under control if it tries to bring the left side under control the right side would multiply and will go out of control that is why for alpha to the power n into magnitude n you can see this signal can never be this particular system can never be made stable okay such systems can never be made stable okay hmm. what this particular that's a very very clear inference from this thing so this problem here uh, tells you the way a z transform works okay so interesting and very important problem also hmm. interesting also important uh, problem okay hmm. yeah uh, next uh, what else uh, after this we'll see yeah any other one yeah uh, here is a problem here is one more problem uh, what is this e to the power j omega naught n hmm? yeah, here is one e to the power j omega naught n. so what is the magnitude now this one the formula is there right you simply substitute uh, zero to infinity even if you get some sine term or a cos term okay if at all you get uh, x of n equal to sine omega naught n into u of n find the z term so what you have to do is you have to convert it into a complex exponential e to the power j theta minus e to the power minus j theta divided by 2j okay hmm? that's what you are uh, supposed to do okay hmm? that's what you are supposed to do and then afterwards you are supposed to uh, you know uh, get even hmm? so okay, okay so here we are okay x of n e to the power j omega naught into n so here we substitute it okay now tell me so 1 divided 1 minus uh, alpha hmm? so we got the answer here so z transform turns out to be z divided by 
that minus alpha from ready uh, template right alpha to the power n into u of n what is the z transform alpha to the power n into u of n it is z divided by z minus alpha hmm? z divided by z minus alpha so in place of alpha we had this particular term so the z transform is uh, this thing only okay now the tricky part here is now how do we find the roc roc is found here roc is found at this particular point okay hmm. here we find the roc you know how do we do this how do we do find the roc here so we'll substitute what is this magnitude of this now what is the magnitude of this particular point magnitude of z to the power minus so z to the magnitude of e to the power j theta is what magnitude of e to the power j theta is one only hmm? magnitude of e to the power j theta is one only okay hmm? magnitude of e to the power j theta is one okay and what about the other term so one this should be less than one so i substitute magnitude equal to one so we get my roc right since the magnitude this is one so this is simple alpha to the power n sort of thing only magnitude of greater than alpha okay hmm. we got here now identifying the pole identifying the pole so now this thing shall be sub you know equated to uh, zero this shall be equated to zero and we get pole equal to uh, z at e to the power j omega naught what is e to the power j omega naught suppose we have r e to the power if at all i have r e to the power j theta if at all I r this means it will have it's a circle with uh, sorry sorry not a circle sorry sorry so uh, this is going to be uh, on the axis this is going to be some signal with the radius r and face angle theta this is a some circle with radius r and face angle theta so here it is so here the radius in terms of r we have a one okay and uh, theta naught so this is the pole okay hmm? this here is the pole okay so one more problem done so now a uh, one more problem we'll see and once we are done with this problem we'll go to the properties of roc okay. after this we'll go to the properties of continue okay so are you there by the way everybody ah, okay hmm. yeah so now here is one more interesting problem okay see the sequence here alpha to the power n from zero to n minus one okay hmm. this is a question so what sort of signal is this by the way this one here is a finite duration sequence so, so we know from the properties of roc finite duration sequences are going to have finite duration sequences are going to have what uh, roc as the entire Z plane, right? ROC is the entire Z plane. This is known, okay. Hmm? So this problem is interesting because here we want to locate the poles and zeros, okay. Hmm? Let us do that, and I mean, we want to find the uh, uh, what uh, Z transform also. Hmm? We want to find the Z transform also, okay. Hmm? Let us uh, start. So, so the formula is simple: alpha to the power n, Z to the power minus n. So here I have summation going from zero to n minus one, alpha to the alpha into z to the power minus one whole to the power n. So the formula one minus alpha to the power n plus one divided by one minus alpha. See the way it has been rewritten. Okay. The way it has been rewritten here makes it much more interesting. Okay. Hmm. So now we are ready. So as I said, the requirement for you to determine the poles and zeros is the entire expression should be in terms of positive powers of z you can see entire expression should be in positive powers of z okay so now now suppose say i had only two points now how do you do this thing by the way how do you do this thing so you can see there is a pole at z equal to a there is a pole at z equal to a then here there is there are another how many n minus one poles so n is equal to 10 then we are going to get some 10 minus 1 we are going to get some 9 poles we are going to get some 9 poles at the origin so here are those 9 poles at origin say for n is equal to 10 author is telling that this is n is equal to 
eight. Then there are seven poles at the origin. Remaining one pole here is at A. Now, how do we get the zeros? Where are these zeros? Now, suppose I had uh, Z equal to Z minus A. Then I would have got zero at A, right? If at all I had Z square, if at all I had Z square minus A square, if at all I had Z square minus A square, right is equal to if at all i equated this to zero zero what are the values of z what are the values of z z square minus a square is equal to zero if at all i had what will be the values of z can somebody reply hmm? if z square minus a square if at all I equal to zero what will be the values of z what will be the values of z hmm? what will be the values of z here if at all I do this thing, then Z can be plus A, Z can be plus A or it can be minus A, right? A square is also Z square, minus A square is also Z square. If at all I have, if at all I have, yeah, yeah, okay, hmm? plus A square and minus A square. Okay, so plus A and minus A. If at all I have, z to the power 4 minus a to the power 4 is equal to 0 hmm. then which all values can z get in this case the z can get value something like a minus a uh, j into a minus j into a Agree, agree. A to the power 4 is also z to the power 4 minus a to the power 4 is also uh, minus a to the power 4 is also z to the power 4 j into j minus 1 into j into j again minus 1. This also minus 4 minus j square minus j square is minus 1 minus or minus again plus. So all four cases that means for z to the 4 4 minus a to the power 4 here now we have we we'll get four zeros one at plus a here then one minus a then at j j means 90 degrees and minus j means minus 90 degrees got this thing that means if at all i have z to the power 4 equal to a to the power 4 my entire 360 degrees will be divided into four parts right so each at 90 and uh, into k for k is equal to 0 i get 0 then k equal to 1 i get 90 k equal to 2 i get 180 k equal to 3 i get 270 so what this similarly similarly here i have n is equal to 8 so for any value of n what am i going to get in that particular case i am going to get 360 entire 360 will be divided by n for this particular case 8 multiplied by k so these are the location no substitute 360 divided by 8 is how much uh, 40 40 oh, 45 degrees right so this is equal to 45 degrees so i get a 0 at 45 0 degrees then at 45 then at 90 then at 135 then at 180 and so and so now you remember there was a pole also at a. Remember, there was a pole also at A. Hmm? So this radius is A anyway. All these cases, the radius is A only. The pole at A and the zero at A, they simply got cancelled. Okay, the pole and the zero at A, they simply got uh, cancelled. Okay, so remaining all remain. Okay, so the pole and zero. Right? It means is Z minus A and here also. Let's say this is n minus one and this is n minus one. So outside bracket this z minus uh, a can be taken outside a uh, bracket okay and they can be cancelled okay hmm. got this particular thing so this problem what about the roc by the way roc let me tell you is entire z plane this particular numerical here is very important because of the the tricky way in which your zeros are placed okay and one more thing i would like to tell you if at all you are given any finite sequence roc is going to be entire z plane Plotting the poles and, and one more tricky point is this particular 
thing here okay the way it has been rewritten see the way to find poles and zeros is your x of z has to be there in positive powers of z okay that we are to do hmm? so that or that so i think now we have seen enough number of uh, problems so now what we'll do in the next class we will start solving problems on the properties of roc okay we'll start solving problems on the properties of uh, roc what's the deal with the uh, proper what not sorry sorry not sorry the properties of z transform what sort of properties does uh, does that transform satisfy see here individual properties z transform is linear hmm? z transform is also linear that means addition in the time domain is same as addition in the z domain also that means if at all you have a very big problem what you can do you can always find their individual z transforms and you can always add them with certain weighing factor okay so z transform is linear that means addition remains addition multiplication by a constant remains a multiplication by a constant only okay hmm? that thing is true now what are the other properties yes the second property is uh, time reversal what is meant by time reversal by the way if at all you happen to know x of n suppose you happen to know something like uh, alpha to the power n into u of n okay you happen to know the z transform of this okay say for some reason you want to know the z transform of alpha to the power minus n into u of minus n now you see here what the point i'm trying to make see you can see every n has been replaced by a minus n every n replaced by minus n then what you have to do in the z transform every z shall be replaced by minus n and every roc if at all it was outside two then it should be inside one by two okay hmm? that's how it is going to be okay then the next property shift in the time domain is multiplication by an exponential in the z domain this was similar to your laplace also right in your laplace you do x of t minus t naught is e to the power minus j uh what uh j t naught right so t naught into s into x of s right something similar here multiplication by an exponential in very interestingly very interestingly the convolution in the z domain the convolution turns out to be a simple multiplication this is the property which you are much more interested in convolution turns into multiplication tomorrow we will do the properties okay hmm. thanks for bearing with me let me stop here